A pack of wild dogs has moved into the system where I hunt up in the high country and scared off all the game. It's time to do some reconnaissance, find out how we can deal with them. My name is Chris Waters, the Australian Huntsman. Let's get to it. First off, I want to thank my brother Tyson for providing me with this footage from his trail cam. You can see here it's up on a tree and it's looking down at this wallow in this area that we hunt. It's actually quite a cleared area halfway up a spur and it's just a fantastic area. You can see a Samba stag out there in the background. Now, this is obviously being filmed on the 30th of the 12th, which is where I wanted to start our little journey. Just to give you an idea of the context of what kind of animals are in this area and how often they pass through. These are just like highlights as well. This, is, this isn't this is every single animal that moves through. These are just some good examples. You can see here, this is 18 days later. So we're in this, you know, kind of the mid to late January. It's still quite hot, so it's not a great time to hunt, but you can see here some sand behinds and a yearling on the left. And this wallow is great because it provides not only a source of water for the deer and the other animals that use it, but also for those samba stags that you know move through the area looking for cycling hinds. It gives them an opportunity to cast their scent around and roll around and get really stinky and musky and uh, then th you know rub that up against trees and they even urinate in these wallows as well to kind of further add to the stench. But you can see here there's plenty of deer in the area at all times in the day. Like This is getting towards the evening. We're like 8.36. Uh, but there are deer everywhere and it's one of those great spots that you hunt it kind of after you've hunted the, the areas around it and had no luck you know that if you come back to this clearing you've got a good chance if you're patient you can get some deer here's a, a fellow spiker as well that came past and uh, here are some fellow stags again we're now at the 20th of january uh, this is right in the middle of the night uh, and which obviously you can't hunt out here at that time uh, but it's good to see that the deer are moving through the area and still using this spot it is kind of surprising um, that they're up here uh, you know they usually hang down in the fringe land a bit more uh, during the the middle of the night and then you know, make their way up to bed in these on these spurs but there they are and they look they look great what was really exciting as well about this time is that we saw some pigs a drift of pigs come through and they are just those gnarly wild pigs that you can see. And I deal with pigs every day. Like we have pigs on our property, um, but they're like domestic pigs. They're those kind of big white pigs that look like babe. Look at this razorback. He just looks gnarly with his hair. Uh, and we were pretty excited to go up and hunt these pigs actually because we, we've seen signs of them during the day, but we've never actually seen one. Um, I think Reese, my friend, has seen one, but none of us have seen one. So we were pretty excited to get up there, but obviously it's in January, so it's still quite hot, which is not an ideal time to hunt because... The second that you shoot a deer, you're on a timer. Uh, here is, again, some of those pictures of the boars during the daytime. They love these wallows because it gives them a chance to roll around and get some natural sun protection from the mud, uh, and they also just have a lot of fun doing it. Here you can see an example of some absolutely gorgeous fellow bucks. Uh, they obviously still have the velvet on their antlers. Uh, it's only the 31st of, of January, so they'll lose that as they head towards the rut, which is towards the end of uh, March, early April. But look at their coloring. They're just absolutely beautiful animals. They almost look like chittle. Their markings are so strong, uh, but they have that, that you know, kind of telltale uh, line down their back of the black. And obviously they have the plated uh, antlers as well. And here is another stag. Again, this, this spot is so fruitful. Like, it's so fruitful. There are so many deer moving through these areas and, and good deer as well, like decent sized deer, like not just does and hinds, uh, but stags and bucks as well. And if you're patient, you can find a spot and like nestle up against one of these logs. So you're blocking your silhouette and you can literally just wait them out, knowing full well that they will come through at all times during the day and during the night. Uh, and you can, you know, take your pick of what you want. So everything's going great. You know, we're at the start of February now. We're ready to go up and hunt. It's starting to cool down. And uh, the animals are still out there. Everything's looking good. We're ready to go. <laughs> so we have hinds. We have stags. We have samba. We have fallow. And then, of course, this happens. Now, before I tell you about these cheeky wild dogs, let me take a minute to talk about the hunting club and why you should join. If you want to skip, timestamps are below. Otherwise, let's get into it. With the goal of connecting Australian hunters together in real, honest, genuine community, in 2022, on January 1st, I created my own hunting club, which I now want to invite you to join. 
Along with the standard member inclusions like public liability, hunting insurance, and genuine reason to own a firearm, our club also offers free member hosted hunts and access to private property, monthly hunting gear and guided hunt giveaways, and a bunch more. But more important than all those things, we are a small community of optimistic and passionate hunters committed to growing and supporting each other through honest relationships and learning. And we also love feeding our families clean organic meat. <laughs> it doesn't matter what hunting style you prefer or the type of game you like to hunt, our community is diverse and accepts all hunters. So if that sounds like the kind of community that you want to be involved in, I want to personally invite you to become a member of the Hunting Trips Australia Hunting Club. Care deeper, hunt harder and grow together. All right, back to the content. So on the 8th of February, we had a pack of wild dogs move into the system, climb up the spur and come to the wallow. And the results were just absolutely devastating, as you will see. Uh, when a pack of wild dogs are serious about an area that they're hunting in consistently, they will scare all the game out of that area. Uh, and it's not just one dog that you generally see. Like, you generally see a pack of dogs, and it could be one, two, three, it could be five, it could be six, it could be seven. Like, it... Like it, it really changes and the types of dogs in these packs change and vary as well uh, because often what you'll find is that these dogs are, you know, once domestic dogs, they're living in farm properties or in people's houses and they kill a chicken or they, they kill an animal and they get a thirst for blood. And they, those kind of primal instincts that were otherwise repressed by their domestic upbringing get overridden and overpowered and they leave and they come up to the high country and they find these other packs of like-minded dogs and they just own the area. Now, some people would call these animals pests. Uh, I don't like that word. I don't like using that word because I don't think it actually helps define what they are or define what they do necessarily. Now, they, I, I will acknowledge they do a lot of damage to farmers' efforts, uh, but in terms of you look at the animal themselves, they are effective at what they do. Amazing, smart, intelligent. If you've ever tried hunting these things, my goodness, are they hard to hunt. Harder than foxes, wilier than foxes. They're very, very, very clever. And, I mean, I just have so many amazing stories about you know encounters that i've had or that other people have had with these things in the wild uh, they're just incredible the way that they work and move as well flushing game down systems and valleys uh where they push them uh, and herd them and then attack them and and it's not like for instance that a single wild dog would have any you know, chance at getting like a, a big, healthy, mature stag or buck or doe. They don't. Uh, but the deer don't want to waste the effort on, you know, even having that confrontation. So they just leave. They just leave the systems and they just go find other places to, to get water, to have sex and do whatever they do. So this is on the 9th of February, obviously. Even by the 14th of February, the dogs were still around and there was still no game. So up until this point, every day we're seeing stags, every day we're seeing fellow, we're seeing yearlings, we're seeing pigs, we're seeing a whole bunch of different diversity. And now all we see are these dogs. Uh, and <laughs> it's just like, it's just amazing how they own areas and just completely shut down and control areas. Um, I've even had stories of uh, people who've gone up to the high country and they've camped on top of ridges and they've come out of their tents in the morning and been face to face with these dogs. And it's really the only thing, um, at least in Victoria, that is potentially a danger to you. Like we don't have crocs and alligators or anything like that. So these guys are like the apex predators. Um, now they don't harm hunters so much that, you know, they'd rather go fight something else, but, but they're there and you need to consider them and think of them. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> oh man, they are frustrating at the same time. Here is an example of some shots were taken during the day and you can just see some of the variation in their colors. Um, this one here like clearly looks like a domestic dog that's you know kind of left. But thankfully, thankfully by the 1st of March, the pigs rolled back in and the dogs had moved on. They, were, they, they found another spot, they found another area and um, it was actually the pigs that moved in first uh, that, that seemed to be the bravest um, and were happy to, to risk <laughs> risk the dogs and, and you know these, these packs that were forming. Here you can see there are some piglets in this drift as well. Oh, not young, they're not piglets, they're probably just young pigs. Um, but they're back in the wallow doing their thing. And pigs are funny as well. They just don't, like very few things phase them. Like it can be, again, you can see here it's, it's like, you know, 9 o'clock, 9.30 at night. It's, it, you know, it wouldn't be warm like it's cold it's raining and they're like you know what 
Let's go down to the wallow. <laughs> Let's go. Sit, go up, cover ourselves in water and mud, even though it's like freezing cold. You can see that they're having a little bit of a, a little of a contest and play as well. Um, I just love pigs. I love hunting pigs. I want to hunt more pigs. Again, I keep them uh, and I, I see them every day, but they're domestic. Very different from wild pigs. Anyway, that's what happened. <laughs> I'm glad to get up there and actually get some deer now. <laughs> now that we've pushed out a little bit further in the year. So there you go, it's always interesting to check out the movements of animals in your local hunting areas. I'm pretty excited to get back up to that spot and hopefully nab some pigs, because I've never gotten a pig in that spot. And obviously if I could get a wild dog or two, that would be awesome as well. I'm sure the local farmers would be pretty happy <laughs> with me. Anyway, let me know if you have any hunting stories about wild dogs or dingoes, always keen to hear them. Otherwise, if you haven't gone check out Hunting Trips Australia Hunting Club, go do that. We'd love to have you part of the club and part of the community. Otherwise, hopefully I see you in a video soon. Hopefully you can get out for a hunt yourself. All right, see ya.